Hey y'all, in this video let's talk about some of the more advanced topics regarding dependency injections in .NET. So as we previously stated, the built-in container is great, but it is simple. And it will allow you to do the most simple tasks that you probably need for 99% of the cases. But if you want to go a little bit far, push it to the limit, you probably will need to include some of the additional containers on top of it. So in this video, I wanted to explore some of the things that you can do with the built-in container without pulling in additional packages. So forwarding, so registering a implementation as multiple interfaces or as itself and name services to retrieve a interface uh, implementation with a key name uh, that will be resolved at runtime. And then we'll also explore some additional packages that will allow you to scan assemblies for services and then implement them and register them uh, without your intervention. So I hope you enjoy and let's jump into it. So first of all, let's talk about forwarding. What is it? Well, if you have a service that should be able to be retrieved via different kinds of interfaces, but all of those interfaces should retrieve one instance, then you're talking about forwarding. And although it is not supported officially via the .NET Core built-in API, you can actually do that by tricking it a little bit. So if you have a simple case once or twice in your code, maybe you don't need to pull in additional packages regarding dependency containers, and you can actually use the trick that we'll talk about in a second. But first, let's explore the example that we have here. So my GUID service is able to set the GUID that is internally stored here, and then it is able to also retrieve the GUID to, to show it to the client. So I split up my service into two interfaces, and one is the GUID getter and the other is the GUID setter. And whenever the client wants to get the GUID and should not be able to set the GUID, they can only inject the GUID getter and retrieve the current instance of the GUID service without the exposure of the set GUID method to them. And now let's see how to register those two interfaces so that they all point to one service. So first of all, let's register our bare bone implementation of the GUID service. So now we'll be able to retrieve via the dependency injection the GUID service. But if we want to have our clients not rely on the uh, implementation, we can also uh, have the GUID setter uh, registration, but we need to then tell it how to retrieve it. So we can get the required service of GUID service. And this logic now tells it that whenever you encounter GUID setter injection, you should retrieve the GUID service that is already in, uh, registered in your dependency injection container. And we can do the same for our GUID setter. So now, as you can see, both of those, oh, sorry, I GUID getter. Both of those point to the same service and let's see that in action. So the easiest way to demonstrate that is before running our application, but after building the service provider, uh, just retrieving both of those interfaces and seeing that whenever we set the GUID via one, the GUID getter will respond correctly. So let's just get the GUID setter, uh, app services get required service of GUID setter. And let's do the same for GUID getter. And now, whenever we set the GUID setter to, to GUID, let's just parse some random GUID. Let's just here have it for plenty. So we'll know it's ours. And then once we retrieve that, let's just write it to the console via the GUID getter. Oops. And let's see that in action. And as you can see, the GUID is displayed correctly. So the GUID getter actually points to the instance of the GUID setter. Next up, let's talk about named services, which out of the box in .NET Core are not built in. But if you don't want to pull in additional packages, you can also achieve that by injecting some method delegate. So let's talk about the example that we have here. We have our interface of iCloud service. And based on some data, maybe your clients are located on different cloud service, uh, you'll need to pick out which service actually should be resolved for the injected iCloud service. So we have uh, 
the AWS service, we have the Azure service and GCP service. So now let's see how we can inject the cloud service in such a way that we can provide some kind of name and pick out the actual implementation based on that. So let's see how we can do that. First of all, let's register all of our services regarding cloud. Even though we won't be injecting them directly, we'll now be able to retrieve it from the container. And then we'll need to inject something that is not the actual implementation and we can't inject the interface because by that time it's too late. So a perfect candidate for that is a delegate. A delegate will be the resolver of our method and this will return the iCloud service and it will be called like cloud service resolver and it will take in the cloud service name as a parameter. So now we will be injecting that into our meth into our program, into our services that depend on the cloud service, but we still need to have the actual code behind that service resolve, uh, resolver. So in program CS, let's go into services and register a singleton that is the uh, delegate and it will take in the provider. So uh, it is basically the same as the service provider. So maybe let's change the name for this. And then based on the name that we have as the parameter for the cloud service resolver, so it's the name of the cloud that we'll want to use. If the name is equal to AWS, then let's just return the service provider, get required service, AWS service. And we can do the same for uh, Azure and GCP. And then we can just correct those. If all else fails, let's just throw a new argument out of range exception. That should do it for now. And now when we want to retrieve the service that we want, we just retrieve the app services, it's required service of the type cloud service resolver. And let's suppose that this is happening in our constructor. And then based on some data that we want, we can invoke it with the uh, cloud name that we actually want. So let's just get the Azure and let's get the result here. So Azure service, and this should be the Azure service that we need. And let's get uh, do something on cloud. So we'll see if the actual implementation is right. So I uh, have the breakpoint here on the resolver. And as you can see, it will go in here and return the Azure service. And then after we uh, logged out the uh, GUID, we will go here and see that we have the message hello from Azure. So as you can see, we have three different services that are all registered under one interface of the uh, I service, uh, of iCloud service, and we will retrieve that with the cloud service resolver that is just delegate that will be executed every time we retrieve that. So hopefully that is clear and let's go into the last example. So now we'll talk about an additional package that you can just pull in on top of your built-in .NET container scrutter. It will not interfere with your registered dependencies. It is built on top of it and I think it's perfect to pull in into your program if you want to have automatically registered dependencies. So whenever you have your dependency, you need to register it here somehow. But if you have a lot of them, you may want to look into some solution that will allow you to automatically scan your assemblies and register them automatically. So for example, if you will create an interface that will denote your service as an injectable thing, it will do that for you. So let's see how we can do that. So what I like to do first is to create interfaces for singleton and transient services that will be implemented on them without any methods, but this will allow me to scan for them. So when we navigate into our services that are registered here, like AWS, Azure, and GCP, if we remove that, it will fail because the get required service will not know how to instantiate those services. But if we make it implement the iSingleton service and 
make it so that it automatically registers all of them, then it will be much easier on, for us to not have that code repeated here. It will just have it marked as singleton service via the interface. Some may argue that it's less readable. Some may argue it is more readable. If you are in doubt, you can always add a comment here that just it is, it is marker service for services with lifetime singleton. And this should be enough. It depends on you, but let's see how we can do that. So Scrutor exposes additional methods on the service collection like scan and that scan will allow us to uh, specify what we want to scan and what we want to do with that scan. So let's just say from an assembly of the I singleton service, but we, because we want to use the assembly that the singleton service lives in, we want to add classes and those classes, maybe class see just a little bit better, should be assignable to the I singleton service interface. So this just tells the scan that, hey, navigate to the assembly of I singleton service and find me all of the classes that implement that interface. And then we want to have the as self. So we want to implement them as themselves, not as the interface that they might be implementing and with the singleton life, lifetime. So now if we run our program with this code, it should allow us to get the Azure service. And if we see that in action, hello from Azure. So this is perfect. Let's just make sure that without it, it won't work because we removed our explicit registration of our AWS Azure and GCP service. And as you can see, no service for that type is actually registered. So if you like this, I highly encourage you to look through the Scrutor documentation, see how you can tweak that, see how you can work with that. Uh, you probably want to register them as not self, but as the uh, interfaces as well. You'll need to figure this stuff on your own. There's a bunch of documentation on their site. So I highly encourage you to see that. And with that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Bye.